It's very fluid. You know, everything is just rolling out of your arms and wrists. Good. Do the whole two phrases from the beginning. Okay, that first note is a little punchy. Can you do it this way? connect, um, let's see, from the first phrase, connect, don't lift your hand, connect to falling. Everything's connected right across. That doesn't mean you're not obeying the sense of uh, phrasing in two measures at a time because you take a new breath in yourself and you breathe into that G, but you don't lift your hand off at the keyboard. But from this G to this G, how do I make this loud? I mean, more, more arm weight. Push, 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 push. Push and fully down to Now here's where you do lift your hand because you have a rest there. Yeah. You do lift your hand. And he, all of these are lifted after each measure. Lift. Lift. You know what? You're not holding your third beat of each of those measures long enough. It would be a three and, right? Yes. One and two and three and rest and two. Three and rest up. Yeah, be careful. Off. Most. Yeah, you want to avoid this though. The F is too loud because you're dragging this. One, four, three, five. It's a little there. You know where you're going, you're going to the long note, which is the F. That's the idea. I give that a little bit more tone because you're going to have to pull back and have something left when you come back to the theme on the next line. You can't be so tiny that this is going to jump out when you do that. So that's why you need more F, so this doesn't jump out on you, right? That means you need more F to survive the four no the notes underneath, right? That could can overshadow the top note. Because the bottom note is not the melody, it's the top note with the stem up that's the melody there, at the end there, the F yeah. to the D. Yeah, so you have to go slowly and really be in the keys, pull out that F without punching it, and then go to the D and have enough tone left to to have this. But this will come in less and then it'll be more, watch. Most. Here we go again. This piece is very sensitive because only two voices and things can pop out at any given time. Yeah, could you first do it without the lower voice there in that measure? Just do the upper voice. Because that's what you want to hear in your head. Because this is underneath, right? This is the under voice. It must be quiet. Over voice is what I want to hear, not the under voice there. Now think of that you're in the honey when you do that. Yeah, somehow that, that F has to be connected over to the D at like honey, like thick honey. See, I open it up more. Now, this music doesn't t tell us everything what to do, but if you kept playing softly, it would end up that we get so soft 
that the next line will hardly come out. So you have to like read between the lines. First you have this two, but this I open up a little. See, now I have a tone again. Music goes in and out, it never flat. This is connected to Well, you can do this, look. I do this, I roll over, roll over, I don't do, don't do that, I roll over, so it's sort of a seam, it's an illusion of legato. Yeah, that's a ninth, ninth. It's a ninth, ninth. it's a major ninth, it's a major ninth. Ta-da, see what I did? And this is, should be nice and much bigger, but still, so you have something left. When you do the two hands, it helps here. Right there. Right, music goes in and out. It's never flat. See, what I was saying in the video when you look at it later is when you have the same notes close to each other, they don't have to be right after, two Ds right next to each other, but they could be close to each other, like here. You have a D and then another D in that measure, and one of them has to be different than the other. They can't be the same. Otherwise, you get this. You haven't done anything vocal with that, a vocal model. It's a little loop. It's a little loop. I'm creating a little inflection. So the two D's are different. You have two D's there, right? Right. Each D's. Second D is stronger. Yeah, I don't like to use the word stronger. I say a little bit of leaning, a little leaning and less after that. But everything, everything is wavy though. This whole piece is very wavy, you notice? What I do? Everything's wavy. There's nothing punchy about this piece at all. It's all wavy. Got to go to that F, though. Everything's going to the long note. You're going to have to have more pull, more extraction. Need to extract the F more. And you, Are you doing a finger switch on that? 4-5 on the F, on the long note, dotted quarter? To not hurt your hands there, you should be subtly, subtly, quietly, going from 4 to 5. Almost nobody knows you're doing it. And I'll show you why. Because if you do that, this, this hurts my hand. It gives me a tendon problem. Four, four oh. to three. I wouldn't do that. That would give me pain in my hand, ultimately, if I did that fingering. So that's why I put on my score a four dash five. Uh, I slip in from the four on the dotted quarter quickly to a five. And then this is a very easy skip for me to the three on D. Five to three, say. So basically, this is what's happening. You can't see it on this angle, but maybe you can. There, four dash five. Now, if you do the two, the two parts, it really works well. Already, I'm on five. I switched so quickly. So four dash five on that app very quickly goes like this. No one knows I do it. It's so quick. Four dash five, slip it in. Five slips in, substitution finger. Substitution finger. That's good. Now let's add the bottom voice to that. You're still going to do the four dash five. Make sure the bottom voice is not stealing anything from the upper voice, but it's an under voice, under toe. See, now what you're getting there is the point I make in my video, because you have two Fs that you just played now. You had the F, which is the second note in that measure, and then you have the long F, and they can't be the same color. They have to be different. These four notes are a little wave. The two voices. Oh, you need more sound on the F. You can't, the F can't peter out. That's where you're going. You're going to the long note. It's almost a little swell to the long note. You have to have more tone there. That was the best one. But make sure you hold that down a quarter for three and four and one. Three and four and one.
Yeah, timing, uh, rhythm is very important in this. Singing pulse. There. That was better. Your sense of your beats have to be like you're pulling them through the honey. They don't get, they don't get poked out. I, I think I have a different fingering than you. So in measure 17, I have four, two, three, thumb, two, is that what you have? And I'm finishing here. Fall down, And by the way, that's the same thing in measure nine, is four, three, thumb, two. They're doing the same thing as they did in measure nine. At the very end, you can do a little stretch. Little stretch. So we know it's the end of the piece. A little bit. This, play, this piece is, is lots of wrist motion. Well, it's lots of supple wrist. And you have to, like, channel the energy through that supple wrist. So if you freeze your wrist, you're going to get lots of pokey sounds. Of course, the left hand, wait till it feels better. Yeah, you can see what happens if you start hurting. You say, then I won't do it. So what are you doing here? It's very soft. That's just like so light and so underneath the, the, what's upstairs, but it's still creating nice harmony. You're still hearing it weaving with the, with the right hand nicely.